Bay YouTube warbles on a lot here. What you're looking at is the north east corner of burn number 31. Standing on the boundary of the burn, looking across with the proposed burn 32, planned to come out of all that fuel and be stopped here by the black zone of the previous burn. The idea is not to get too much fire going all at once and make sure you've got something to catch it with. Now, at the moment, 20 past four on the 4th of September, the wind is varying between below two kilometers an hour and it's occasionally coming up to about 15 kilometers an hour. And I have a personal rule of thumb. Bear in mind that a law is nothing but a formalized rule and a rule is nothing but information for the general guidance of the otherwise uninformed. So I've developed my own little rule. That's the edge of burn 31 there. That's the edge of burn 8, which will also be expected to function as a blacked out catching zone because there's plenty of other blacked out area on the other side of it. So when the fire comes out of there, it should run over here and run into the fuel depleted area of burn 8. And then there's a wallaby trail runs along there. Burn 8's on that side. Burn 7 was on this side. I did 7 first because I just wanted to have that little anchor here when I was lighting that up. Sometimes you have to do a small burn before you do the big burn. Okay, so the wet line will commence here and run along that wallaby trail there. You can just see the next bucket. Areas that I think need it. We go one bucket per 10 meters. Areas that don't need much more than that, we might go one bucket per 20 meters. But as I was saying, I have been coming up with a rule, which I call the rule of 20s. Now, by the way, there we see that it is in fact a valid permit. We are within the dates. And I don't mind if I let people know that I live on Yarraford Road at Dundee. I don't see my address as being a secret worth keeping. But anyway, my theory is if the wind is above 20 kilometres an hour, right, which translates as 12 and a half miles an hour, which translates as 10 knots or 10 nautical miles an hour. So let's call it 20 kilometres an hour because Australia is a metricated country these days and everybody else thinks in metric. Very few people think in miles an hour and even less people think in knots. So 20 kilometres an hour, if the wind's above that, I don't feel happy lighting up. If the temperature's above 20 degrees, I don't feel happy lighting up, and at the moment it's 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, if the soil moisture profile is below 20%, which in this case we're sitting on nearly 60%, so we're okay with that too. And the other thing is the relative humidity, which should be above 20%, and at the moment it's 25%. So the relative humidity means that it's going to be dry air getting sucked into the fire, not wet air. So we're, we're you know, we're in five percent absolute and twenty-five percent relative of what my limits are. It could get a little bit drier than this, and I would I would still be interested in burning, particularly because we've got sixty odd percent soil moisture profile. If the soil moisture profile was down around 20%, you know, say 25%, and we had 25% humidity, and if the wind was above 15 kilometres an hour, and if the temperature was up above 15, I'd, I'd say it was too marginal to burn. But by the rule of 20s, which I cooked up, plucked out of my backside, you know, delivered via brain fart, I think I'm okay.
So on the anchoring corner, we have three bottles of drip torch fuel and a bucket. Once again, I'm walking the wet line in the reverse direction that I'm going to lay the wet line. So when I finish pouring water along and I get to that bucket that I left back there behind me, and I'll fill that bucket and come back and do any spots that look as if they need more. And as you may have guessed or gathered, somebody with a big foot has been down here on this wallaby trail, basically enlarging the gap. So the wet line goes from the center of the wallaby trail out onto the side we don't want to burn, and the drip torch fuel will go on the dry side, and any that comes out should run into the water and stop right on the trail. It just takes maybe half or three quarters of an hour of walking around figuring out which wallaby trail leads to which wallaby trail, where you want to lay the wet line, how far you think the drip torch fuel is going to stretch. And when you start this procedure at maybe, well, I started at half past 11 this morning, carrying buckets and pre-positioning them carried buckets for an hour, had lunch, carried buckets for an hour, mixed the drip torch fuel. You have to make a reasonable guess at which way the wind is going to be blowing when it's coming window time in the afternoon, when the air is almost still. And then you take a bit of a gamble on what direction the wind is actually going to puff when it's almost still. And once again, being just a couple of kilometres to the west of the watershed, I'm figuring on the sea breeze. And here we have the other anchor point diagonally across the burn. Yeah, I'm hubristic enough to think that I can burn one side of that wallaby track and not the other. But there's a bit of precedent there. It has, has been done before. So, I'd appreciate feedback on what you think about my uh, proposition for a rule of 20s. If the wind's above 20 kilometres an hour, don't light up. If the temperature's above 20 degrees Celsius, don't light up. If the humidity is below 20 degree, a 20 percent relative, don't light up. And if the soil moisture profile is below 20 percent, don't light up. Otherwise, you'll have too hot, too intense, too fierce a fire, and it may just get away from you. And this is the burn 31 coverage of which I'm fairly pleased, or with which I'm fairly pleased. So, once again, this camera is apparently capable of staying on pause more or less indefinitely while it's sitting in my pocket, so I'll have a go at making further instalments to this movie. But if it suddenly stops, it means that something's hit me in the chest and pushed the button by accident, or, I don't know, the software has got the better of my intentions. So it may be chow, on the other hand, I may get to talk to you in little 30 second spurts spread out over the next hour, hour and a half. Warbles on a lot to YouTube, hope to see you later. Okay, nearly five to five. I've done me wet line. You can just see the color variation there. So, Let's just hope nothing goes wrong. I like to keep a bit of a perfect record and it would be very embarrassing if I had to ring up and tell people that I'd made a mess of it. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Until the next instalment. Well, as you can see, the wind's not been entirely consistently cooperative. 
So I'm having to have a very, very gentle start to the burn. Basically, I want it to run from left of the stream to right of the stream and blow the fire down onto the wet line before I work my way in to the stuff that really I haven't got the ability to put out. That's why I started in this sort of country. Got to play a little bit careful with this game. Okay, 25 past five. And so far we've come about 20 yards. Basically because the wind has been variable. And I just don't want to risk having something like this a westerly puff get going so uh, when I get up to the corner there another 20 yards either the wind will have stabilized or I will have decided that I'm not going to continue this burn today sometimes like I said it pays to play careful don't light such a big fire that you can't put it out if the wind isn't right, the wind isn't right. We shall see. Okay, quarter to six. Decision's been made, I'm gonna go with the burn. Everything's looking just fine. Pretty please, creator. Don't let me fuck this up. Okay, so we're talking five to six. I'll get that out of your way. Everything's going pretty well, just at the moment. Feeling fairly happy with it. Although, as you can see, I'm wearing the backpack while igniting because it, it became necessary, shall we say. Okay, quarter past six. And we have quite a blaze going. And it goes quite a long way off into the distance. It's gonna be a big kind of a job to survey this one in the morning. But, the wet line ends out over there. I thought you might be able to see the... Uh... the reflective tape on the backpack. Okay, that's going pretty well. There's the moon. There's the ember attack going up. Yeah, I think I've done pretty well with that one. And I haven't lost the burn. I'm now back to the black line. So yeah. This one is going well. Damn, it's so hard to look in the direction of the camera without hitting you with the head torch. What a nice little burn. Or actually, it's more or less quite a big burn, really. So, I'd better get back into it with the drip torch. Okay, 6.25. I'm standing in burn area 31, looking across what was the black line. Basically, it's all going off, just exactly as I wanted it to do. And I'm just coming back to, once again, change the drip torch bottle. And there you can see the reflective tape. Yeah. It's going well. Okay, 10 to seven. And I still have a pretty good fire going, but I'm now out of drip torch fuel. 
and I'm just walking the perimeter before putting the backpack down because I've got the whole thing contained it's burning yep sure is but it's all inside a blacked out area So this has been quite a, a sizable burn. And this tree is going to get a little bit warm as the leaf pile underneath it burns. But all told, I would have to say I'm pretty happy with this. I'll just turn around so you can get to see the handiwork of the handyman in the foreground. Yeah, that's bloody grass at night. And two days ago we had one millimetre of sleet. If you saw my rebroadcast the first dog on the moon, you will have seen the sleet that we had. So, I declare this burn to be a success and I'm gonna go and take the backpack off. Yeah, it's going well, isn't it? A therapeutic landscape hazard reduction burn. There you go, I just, wipe the smears of oil off the lens because pretty difficult to not smear it up when you're working with drip torch fuel and reaching into your pocket to get the camera there now you can actually see me perhaps a little bit clearer by the firelight <laughs>